This is It's Gonna Be Okay with Dr. Roseanne and I'm Dr. Roseanne. And today we're talking about MTHFR and mental health. Yep, you know what that stands for, but we're not gonna talk about it because this is sort of PG-13. But it's a genetic mutation that affects mental health. And I get asked about this constantly. And, you know, recently I had a physician come to me and said, you know, he tests for it in his, in something to do with cancer. And he said he'd never even heard of it in terms of mental health. And I thought, oh boy, we've got a long way to go when a physician doesn't even, had never even heard of it. He was grateful. And uh, make sure you read my blog on it because it's one of my most popular blogs and I'm really pretty proud of it. So let's talk about what is MTHFR why you need to know about it, what you can do about it, because there's actually lots of things and in, in how much it is. So it's a genetic variation in the MTHFR gene that affects how the enzyme functions. And in short, what happens is your body lacks this enzyme to be able to properly utilize mostly the B vitamins, um, folate in particular. Um, and it does all kinds of things to the brain and body. We're going to talk about it um, <clears throat> and what it is. So there are two variants that are very common. Um, C677T, I got that, so do the Hodge boys, and a 12 90 C. These are the most common variations. Um, and MTHFR is incredibly common. There's research all over the place that says it's 30 to 50% of the population. I have heard um, estimates as high as 70% of the population, but I think it's pretty widely accepted that it's about 50% of the population. And even within that, it is more variable, right? So when we talk about these common genetic mutations, so C677T is more common in European descent, where the A1298C is more common in Asian populations. Um, and so depending on your lineage, you may have one, you may have both. Um, if you have both, you're double MTHFR'd. You, you, <laughs> that's usually what we say, you're kind of double in trouble. Um, but it is, you will tend, you do tend to have higher level of clinical issues um, when we lack this enzyme. So what's the big deal? Okay, so you lack an enzyme. Hello, the B vitamins are essential for our nervous system to regulate. So without folate, without being able to properly utilize folate, you are not detoxifying, okay? What happens when you're not detoxifying everyday things? And let me tell you, there's tons of toxins in our environment. If you are just learning about that, hello, because babies are born with over 267 toxins. We have toxins from plastics, from our carpeting, from paints, from our food. Is like if you're eating U.S.-based wheat, it's got a lot, it's got poison in it. Let's just call it poison. Let's call it what it is. I'm not a lunatic. It's all, it's all known, right? Glyphosate is in there. So if we don't have folate and we're not utilizing it, right? It doesn't matter how good you know we're eating or if our multivitamin has it and it's not the correct form. I'm going to tell you, explain that. You are not able to properly detoxify, and those toxins are going to end up in your organ, probably your noggin. So we know that it is, we're going to talk about what it's associated with, but it's really important. So then some other common difficulties are B12, B6, um, and without these, your nervous system can't work properly. B6 often affects sleep, most commonly, a lot of other things too. Um, and B12, we need it for neurotransmitters. We need it for our central nervous system to work properly. So. It is way more common than we realize. This MTHFR genetic mutation also impacts how psychiatric medication works. And we've known this and since 2000, it's either 14 or 15, it's all blending together. Thank you, pandemic. The Journal of American Psychiatry recommends that all psychiatrists do genetic testing 
prior to giving medication so that it would be able to they would be able to see without whack-a-mole prescriptions whether the medication could work or not. It has a lot to do with this mutation, but there's a lot of other mutations too. But this is so common. If we're estimating that one in two, I, I feel that in my population, I would say that it's probably 95% in the people that come to me have this mutation. That's how strongly it's associated with mental health. Um, and, and why, right? So it affects folate particularly, but it also affects neurotransmitter production and function. Um, and people don't know that, right? They always think, oh, it's got to be genetics. I've inherited the ADHD. Well, no, you can have the mutation um, that affects neurotransmitter production and functioning. So let's talk about the research studies. There's a lot of research studies that link MTHFR2 of course, autoimmune and physical problems. Um, and one of the most common reasons people get tested for folate, some of you moms are going to know, is if you had miscarriages. So low folate levels we know are, are associated with miscarriage. Um, and that might be one of the only times you've been tested for MTHFR. But it's also can be associated with cardiac problems, a stroke, autoimmune. But in terms of mental health, it's associated with ADHD, anxiety, OCD, depression. Uh, I, I've, I've never met somebody with bipolar that didn't have MTHFR. Um, it's very strongly associated with schizophrenia. Um, there are lots of clinical mental health issues that are affected by MTHFR. MTHFR affects mental health. And we know this through research, right? Remember nerdy brainy stuff with Dr. Rowe, got to have research. So what do you do? So first of all, <clears throat> if you if you particularly have had terrible reactions to medications or even neutral reactions, and you're like, I need another solution, please think about things other than medication because you could be MTHFR, give a single or a double mutation, as well as others. You want to go to a functional practitioner or ask your psychiatrist to run genetic testing. This is very, very common. You can buy kits, home kits. You can even do 23andMe. I don't recommend 23andMe unless you're doing it anonymous. Um, and please turn off that you don't want to be contacted by strangers. Lots of people I know have done this and found out they their, their father wasn't their father. Um, surprised. <laughs> um, I laugh, but it's the truth. Um, but you want to get that testing. You want to look at it because there are more bioavailable forms of the B vitamins. They're called, it's called methylated. So there'll be like a, a methylfolate, a methyl B12. Um, that is one way to do it. You also might not be a good candidate for methylated folate or methylated B12, depending on your other mutations or double mutations. So working with a functional practitioner who can look at that testing is really an amazing place to start. And I hope this brings hope to people who feel like, wow, we've tried so many meds with our kids and they have these, um, what they call paradoxal reactions, opposite reactions. It might be because of MTHFR. And then I also want you to have a moment of clarity because this along with other supplements, right? Looking at nutrient deficiencies could be a game changer in your child's mental health. Um, it's really important to get proper support and find help from somebody who understands this. So you're not just, you know, stuck on the uh, roller coaster going around and around and around. But, you know, MTHFR is very common. Um, it's something that can be addressed in a natural way. And there's more than just supplementation. Food can be a part of it. There are other things. But I hope this gave you some hope. If you are interested in working with us, you can go to www.drrosanne.com forward slash help. Um, and, you know, I'm really, really glad that we're having this conversation and, and share it with people that you love and care about um, because that's what I do. And I want people to know that there is another way and that it's going to be okay when we use natural solutions. Mm -hmm.